Zowie was once the king of the gaming mouse market. They made products that were built for pros, used by pros, and nobody could rival their incredible iconic shapes. But in order to stay on top, Zowie needed to innovate. When other companies inevitably came up and stole their thunder, one mouse manufacturer in particular became the go-to head clicker for many CSGO pros. Oh, here it is. Yeah, enjoy. Sorry, sir, how's your clutch so far? Because it's just two kills away. Oh, he got off it. He's got him off that Ten clutch. seconds. Is everything to your liking? Oh my God. Is this exactly how you wanted it? <laughs> because he sticks the landing. Over the past few years, Vaxi has become something of a household name, especially within the Counter-Strike community. Because their mice were cheaper, used newer tech, and were arguably just as good, they've become one of Zowie's biggest rivals. But is Vaxi's first wireless mouse their greatest creation yet? All right, so before we get into the video, I wanna remind you all that we have merch. Head over to shop.thescore.com and check out our esports collection. I've heard that you might even get a Source 2 beta code with one of our hoodies. Yeah, you can't say that. Like I can't say that? All right, so it's no secret that Zowie have long been considered the goat when it comes to mouse shape. Plenty of players, myself included, swear by them. And it has been that way forever. Back in 2010, in collaboration with Counter-Strike legends Heaton and Spawn, Zowie released the EC1 and EC2, two mice that went on to become staples within the FPS community. Counter-Strike players in particular fell in love with their shape and the fact that you could adjust all the settings by using buttons on the bottom of the mice. This meant that the pros didn't have to worry about downloading any software onto the PCs that they were using on LAN. Zowie's products were quite literally made for the pros. But since the shape didn't necessarily work for everyone, Zowie eventually expanded their lineup with the S, FK, and ZA series mice. Their products now covered nearly every shape and size that you could imagine. And even pro players who preferred ambidextrous mice had options. That's Nothing good. Nice. Uh, when are shooting in a flash? A flash nice. Nice. Flash long. Nice. nice. No more I'm flashes. <laughs> I don't see him. I picked him. Nice. nice. Zowie had nothing short of a stranglehold on the CSGO player base. The majority of pros were using their products, sure. But as it turns out, Zowie may have taken this for granted. As other companies began implementing wireless technology and overall better components, many pros began jumping ship. And to make matters worse, some of Zowie's founding members left the company to start their own ventures. In April of 2020, a group of former Zowie employees officially announced the arrival of Vaxi, a peripherals company aimed at serving the esports pro scene. The community was rightfully excited to see what kind of products they would produce, and they didn't have to wait long to find out. In August of that same year, Vaxi presented their initial offering to the public. The Vaxi designed Zigen NP1 was a collaboration with Japanese Counter Strike legend Napo, and because it shared a a similar shape and size with Zowie's S2 and EC2 models, even diehard Zowie purists were excited to try it out. Now there's a lot of hype behind this mouse as the original creators of the Zowie mice decided to make another mouse under a new name. And we all know how influential they have been in the past in shaping the landscape of gaming mice today. There's no denying that. This is one of my most anticipated mice of 2020. It's great to see somebody involved with an influence in the creation of the shapes and designs of mice. Vaxi Zygen uh, NPO1 really did not go short in any area of this mouse. And the build quality on this mouse is fantastic, terrific, splendid, whatever way you want to put it. Um, this is a well-built mouse. The NP01 was extremely well received, especially considering it was Vaxi's first ever release. Within a few months, players all over Counter-Strike were opting to use the NP01 over their trusted Zowies. Vaxi's newfound popularity within the CS scene allowed them to quickly pump out new and improved mice with different shapes, and in some cases, lighter Wait, they had essentially done what everyone expected them to do from the start. Vaxi made great mice with great shapes that rivaled their initial creations at Zowie. And in most cases, 
they were actually better. But just like Zowie, Vaxi mice were still missing one crucial feature. While every other manufacturer was showing off their latest and greatest wireless tech, Zowie and Vaxi fans were begging both companies to ditch their clunky paracords and go wire-free. Now, for Zowie, there was quite a lot of pressure to do this. Fans of their products had literally been waiting years for Zowie to go wireless, and were beginning to get a little impatient. So back in January, they finally caved and announced wireless versions of the EC. They were, however, criticized for its high price tag and slightly outdated 3370 sensor. But the real cherry on top was Vaxi's announcement of a wireless version of the XE, just four days after Zowie released theirs. The XE was cheaper than Zowie's wireless EC, came with a newer sensor, and gave fans real insight into how their new new favorite product was being made. Vaxi released the XE wireless alongside a video that explained why they use certain components and why the mouse weighed in at 76 grams. The company's transparency has definitely earned them a lot of respect from fans over the past couple of years. If you haven't watched that video, I would definitely recommend it if you are a peripheral junkie. I really, really enjoyed the video that Vaxi released a couple of days ago, where they're kind of explaining, you know, why they're going with a 3370 versus, you know, 3395 or whatever. I've always been a fan of maybe not implementing something first, but implementing it correctly, right? So even if they don't do wireless at first, but they do wireless now and they do a really good job at it, you know, where battery life is great, if you're not getting any delay or any latency issues, pros still require these tools to work, right? And they need them to be perfect, pretty much. So maybe they took a long, longer than, you know, expected by the community or whatnot. But I'm all for it at the end of the day, as long as they do it well. Now, after all that, I'm sure you're eager to know how the mouse actually performs. Thankfully, Vaxi were super kind and sent us a wireless XE. So let's find out. And now the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Hey, look. It's me, the guy who in this one particular circumstance actually knows what he's talking about. Take that, Colton, you controller-loving casual So yeah, what do I think about Vaxi's XE wireless? I think that it's a banger, for the most part. First things first, the packaging, which is made up entirely of recyclable paper and cardboard. You open it, see a mouse, a cable, and a dongle, that's it. It's simple and non-wasteful. There's also zero plastic, which I really appreciate. All Vaxi cares about is how the product performs, and cutting costs on packaging is a great way to bolster that. As for the mouse itself, it's basically a G Pro with a Zowie grade adjustability interface. The clicks are super crispy, as are the side buttons, and have little to no post travel. The scroll wheel gives no cause for complaints, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a Zowie user. My standards aren't very high. <laughs> Speaking of Zowie, like I said, everything is fully adjustable from the bottom of the mouse. Power, DPI, polling rate, and click response speed. This means that you don't need to install any supplementary software, though you can if you want. It's called the competitive firmware and allegedly offers better responsiveness at the expense of battery life. Unlike Zowie, there is a function button at the top of the mouse that allows you to easily check battery life, which according to Vaxi is 90 hours in standard mode and half that in high-speed mode and when running the competitive firmware. Compared to the G Pro, the XE feels, I don't know, built better? It comes off as less dinky and toy-like in the hand and to me has a tighter, more succinct feel. I also really like the matte surface, which feels a lot less likely to wear off than the Zowie's. All in all, the XE seems like a cheaper, arguably better G Pro. I can't speak to the weight difference because I personally am not a fan of ultra light mice, but if you're a fan of this G Pro shape, I personally would recommend an XE over a G Pro. Speaking of the shape, that's the one thing about this mouse that I expected to hate a lot more than I did. I do not like flat backed mice. The Zowie EC series, ugh. 
hate it. Those who know me know that I am a long, long time ZA11 user precisely because I cannot use a mouse unless the hump is shifted towards the back. That said, I really didn't mind the shape of the XE. The hump seems to be ever so slightly pushed to the rear, which did make a difference. I obviously wish it was shifted even more, but I must admit it is a masterfully designed shape though I would expect nothing less from members of the original Zowie crew. It felt okay to play with, and I hit crispier shots than I anticipated, but the reality is that there is just one thing about this mouse that I simply cannot overlook, size. The Vaxi XE Wireless is a phenomenal mouse that is categorically not for me. Like a lot of new age mice, the XE is simply too small. I love Vaxi. Seriously, both the Outset and XE are amazing mice that I would switch to in a second. But unfortunately, my hands are 20 by 10 and a half centimeters long. Until they release an XL version, it's back to Zowie for me. That said, I recognize that I am in the minority and do think that the XE is a home run for folks with normal sized hands. It boasts a safe, carefully constructed ambidextrous shape that Vaxi were smart to put forward as their first wireless offering. The day they go bigger, I'm there. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. So there's no doubt that the guys over at Vaxi have made one incredible mouse. Hell, it might even be better than the wireless EC that their former company, Zowie, just released. And it comes as no surprise that pros are already trying it out. And plenty of casuals will tell you that Vaxi mice are the way of the future. But despite the high price tag and inferior hardware, when compared to other manufacturers, there are still many loyal fans willing to foot the bill once Zowie adds a wireless option for their favorite shapes. Which might actually happen sooner thanks to some healthy competition between these two companies. Vaxi basically gave Zowie a kick in the butt and made them realize that in order to stay relevant, they needed to release new, better products. So for now, I'm holding out for Zowie to make some wireless ZAs. But if someone else wants to make one first, I'm there. Zowie makes me want to scream into a f***ing pillow. Great, the EC went wireless. What do the FK, ZA, and S users f***ing care? Like, oh, but it's going to take time. It's going to take... I mean, you had a f***ing decade, bro. <laughs> like, you had a lot. I just want someone to make a ZA11 clone, not a ZA12 clone, not a ZA13 clone. 